With a length of only 14 feet 10 inches and weighing only 5,600 pounds, the XF-85 Goblin was the smallest jet-propelled fighter ever built. The tiny aircraft was meant to be carried by a B-36 bomber and be launched to safety if the mothership was attacked. However, with no landing gear and difficulty recovering the small parasite plane with a retractable trapeze, the aircraft proved impractical. The plane was not meant to land but instead to be picked up mid-air. Hooking the plane onto the trapeze was difficult and during one test run the cockpit canopy was ripped off and the pilot's helmet and mask were also torn off. Luckily, the pilot was able to land the plane on its belly. The test program was cancelled in 1949. The successor to the pregnant guppy plane, the Super Guppy, is a cargo aircraft modified from a Boeing 377. The Super Guppy was originally used to carry large loads from me and also the NASA space program. The Guppy can carry a load of 54,000 pounds. Its first flight was in 1965. The airplane manufacturer Airbus had manufacturing plants in far apart locations, each producing different sections of planes. In 1972, Airbus began using Super Guppies to transport components of the planes they were building. So much so that there was a quip that every Airbus is delivered on the wings of a Boeing. Airbus has since replaced Super Guppies with the larger Airbus Beluga. In total, five Super Guppies were built and all are currently preserved on display except for one which is still active at the El Paso International Airport in Texas. Known as the Flying Pancake, the Vought V173 looks like it belongs in the sea as opposed to the sky as it resembles some form of a sea creature. Built during World War II by Chance Vought under 1940 U.S. Navy contract, the sea creature aircraft was first flown on November 23, 1942. After making more than 190 flights and accumulating 131 hours of flight time, the Navy saw enough potential in the Pancake to order two of its enlarged metal versions, the XF-5U-1S. Alas, the first had only begun taxi tests in 1947 when the Navy canceled the program, and by January of 1949, the Navy ordered it to be destroyed. Luckily, the V-173 was spared the same fate and was placed in sword until it was acquired by the National Air and Space Museum in 1960. A 1940s aircraft designed by Willard Custer that never got past a prototype, the CCW-5 has a unique curved wing design that makes both wings look like they're smiling. Sadly, the CCW-5 was rejected by the Marine Corps despite its ability to create more lift than planes with traditional wings, partly because Custer apparently failed to adequately explain the advantages its channel wing allows it. Although there has been renewed interest in the design and continued efforts to educate the aviation community of its benefits, the CCW-5 sits at the Mid-Atlantic Aviation Museum in Reading, Pennsylvania. Although extremely awkward looking, the top secret tacit blue aircraft of the early 1980s was highly advanced in its stealth technology. The stealthy aircraft could loiter over the battlefield without fear of detection by enemy radar, all while using its advanced sensors to monitor enemy forces and retrieve data. After 135 flights, the program was canceled in 1985. By 1996, it was finally declassified and is now on display at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. In 1974, John Edgeley decided to create an aircraft that would have advanced visibility such as that of a helicopter combined with exceptional slow flying capabilities and designed the Edgeley EA-7 Optica. The unusual aircraft offers the pilot and passengers a spectacular 270 degree panoramic view as well as thrilling nearly vertical downward vision. Despite extreme interest due to the Optica's many possible uses, production of the sought-after aircraft was halted after a crash of one of the first aircrafts in production caused the collapse of the company. Although the project was picked up again numerous times, all production attempts have been plagued. The Ames Dryden 81 oblique wing aircraft has been called the weirdest plane ever created by NASA. The unique plane exhibits a slanted wing, as instead of the common perpendicular wings, this plane's wings sit at an awkward 60-degree angle across the fuselage. NASA designed the oddly wing plane in an effort to decrease fuel usage, but despite handling takeoff and slow speed flight similar to a regular aircraft, the aircraft was difficult to handle at angles above 45 degrees, and the plane took its last flight on August 7, 1983 as research stopped. Ever wonder if a triangle could fly? Apparently it can, as the Boeing X-48 with its blended wing looks like a giant triangle. The aircraft differs drastically from the wing and tail planes we're used to seeing as it has
has no tail and no separation between the fuselage and wings. Both Boeing and NASA have been working on the design as part of NASA's environmentally responsible aircraft project. The distinctive design requires less fuel, has fewer emissions, and even makes less noise. NASA and Boeing hope to develop the concept further and possibly even use the design in a military aircraft for carrying cargo and aerial refueling missions all within 15 to 20 years. The short, stubby-looking Steve Caproni, aka Flying Barrel, was another aircraft that, at the time of its creation in 1932, looked to observers like it probably wouldn't fly. However, Luigi Stippa's careful designs paid off as on October 7, 1932, the odd aircraft with a narrow fuselage atop a large, entubed propeller proved to have a quick takeoff and landing as well as extreme in-flight stability. Despite the advanced features displayed during test flights, the increased stability was shown to decrease the aircraft's maneuverability, as well as restrict its speed to a maximum of 81 miles per hour. The Italian government considered the project a failure, as it would not work for military operations requiring speed and maneuverability. Named after Star Trek's Klingon starship, the top-secret bird of prey certainly looks the part. Taking flight on September 11, 1996, the Bird of Prey was one of the first aircrafts that had a single-piece composite structure, and according to Phantom Works, the company that built it, the aircraft made use of new technology that revolutionized aircraft design, development, and production, making it easier and more affordable to produce. The existence of the exotic-looking aircraft remained top secret until it was declassified in 2002, nearly three years after its final test flight in 1999. A flying wing design considered to be ahead of its time, the Northrop YB-49 showed a lot of promise as it reached a top speed of 520 miles per hour and attained a maximum altitude of 42,000 feet. Unfortunately, during a test flight on Saturday, June 5, 1948, the YB-49 aircraft number 2 came to a tragic end as it crashed, killing all five crew members. While the YB-49 number 1 aircraft kept flying test runs, it too came to an unfortunate end Wednesday March 15, 1950, after a high-speed mishap that the crew thankfully survived, but the aircraft did not. Since the cancellation of all government flying wing contracts in the 1950s, the technology has caught up and converged to make the forward-thinking flying wing concept viable and in use today. In 1999, NASA's remotely piloted solar-powered Helios prototype that was developed under NASA's Environmental Aircraft and Sensory Technology Project made its first flight. Although it came up shy of NASA's goal of achieving sustained flight at 100,000 feet, according to NASA's website, it reached an unofficial world record altitude of 90 96,863 feet and sustained flight above 96,000 feet for more than 40 minutes in 2001. Sadly, during a 2003 test flight in Hawaii, the prototype crashed into the ocean after experiencing structural failure and both the aircraft and its experimental fuel system were destroyed. A plane to make planes, the Boeing 747 Dreamlifter carries massive cargo volume as the giant aircraft transports plane parts, particularly large fuselage sections and wings for the production of 787 Dreamliners. With a cargo capacity of 250,000 pounds, the Dreamlifter can carry your wildest dreams. At 235 feet, the massive Dreamlifter requires 9,100 feet of runway to take off, a quality which left one Dreamlifter temporarily stranded at a Kansas airport when the pilot accidentally landed at the wrong airport and had to negotiate a runway 3,000 feet too short in order to take off again. During World War I, Russian pilot Konstantin Kalinin designed one of the biggest planes ever built for the time. With a massive wingspan, large underwing pods, and odd twin booms, the heavy aircraft was only able to complete seven test flights before it crashed on November 21, 1933. The crash, which killed all 14 people on board the plane and one unfortunate person on the ground, was caused by a structural failure, although there has since been speculation of sabotage. The Airbus equivalent of the Dreamlifter, the Airbus A300-600ST, has been given the nickname Beluga due to its uncanny resemblance to a beluga whale. Regarded by many as the world's strangest looking airplane, the plane can carry over 103,000 pounds of cargo. The Beluga is essential to Airbus plane production as its large cargo space is used to transport plane parts produced around the world. In an attempt to create an aircraft that has the vertical or short takeoff and landing of a helicopter combined with the high speeds of a fixed-wing plane, NASA, DARPA, and Sikorsky aircraft teamed up to design the X-Wing. 
The aircraft's X-shaped wings work like helicopter blades for takeoff, but then must stop their circular motion to cruise and reach higher speeds. Unfortunately, the transition from takeoff to cruise proved too difficult and the X-wing project was canceled in January 1988 due to the aircraft's complexity. You've heard of hybrid cars, but have you ever heard of a hybrid aircraft? How about a hybrid aircraft capable of carrying 20 tons of cargo? That's exactly what aircraft manufacturer Lockheed Martin has created. The prototype, called P-791, is 120 feet long and uses the aerostatic lift of helium combined with aerodynamic lift from the wings and motor. Lockheed hopes to eventually develop the full-size version, the LMH-1, which will be an astounding 300 feet long to revolutionize the commercial transportation industry. In the 1950s, Canada created a real flying saucer when they attempted to create a supersonic fighter bomber with vertical takeoff and landing. When the project became too expensive, both the U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force took it over, but eventually realized neither could use it for their desired purpose as it was incapable of high speed, only being able to fly a maximum of 35 miles per hour, and difficult to impossible to control as it was aerodynamically unstable. A massive six-engine, 600-ton aircraft that's been known to draw a crowd when landing at new airports was built in the Ukraine to transport the Soviet Union space shuttle, the Buran, in the late 1980s. With a wingspan equal to the width of nearly two football fields and a length measuring 84 meters, the AN-225 is the world's largest plane. The enormous aircraft is currently used for commercial transportation as it can carry oversized cargo that no other plane can. During the Cold War in 1987, the Soviet Union had the idea of creating an air and water attack vehicle. The resulting 350-ton aircraft seaplane they called Project 903, aka the LUN, had six Moskit cruise missiles. When the Cold War ended, the LUN was changed to a rescue aircraft, but eventually ended up in a scrapyard.